Good morning all. In this today's session of operating system, we'll be dealing about introduction to Linux, architecture and features of Linux and the Linux commands. Coming to introduction to Linux, Linux as we all know, it is nothing but a free and open source software. And this free and open source software was created in 1991 by Linus Torvalds. He was a student at University of Helsinki. Initially, this was built as Minix. Uh, it was an alternative to Minix, which was a Unix clone. In the earlier versions of the development, Linux was named as Freaks, but later renamed it as Linux. And this Linux was named after Torvald's first name and the word Unix. So mixture of these two put together, he has named the operating system as Linux, which was free and open source. And that was in 1991. Now we'll see the basic architecture of Linux. Now when you see the architecture of Linux here, we have different layers. We have seen different operating system structures. So this approach is nothing but your layered structure. So in this layered structure, we have applications, shell, kernel, hardware, and the utilities. Coming to the applications, if the user wants to interact with the operating system, he has to make use of some application program. And based on the application program, the commands given by the user and using the application programs will be taken by the shell and shell here acts as a converter which will convert your commands given by the user to the understandable language of the kernel kernel will be able to understand the operations given by the shell according to that it will execute so kernel here is nothing but the main important component of your operating system which will help the operating system in performing the functionalities to the user. And when we go for shell here, we have a command line shell and a graphical user shell. We have seen as a command line interface where we have to type the commands in order to get the desired output. Whereas if you go for graphical user shell, we have your icons where double clicking that particular icons will get the operations done. And in the next level, we have your system utilities and the libraries. When you go for your system utilities, system utilities are nothing but the basic operations which we require for a system. Such as if you want any of your file to be compressed, we have your WinRAR zip operations. And if you want to protect your system, then we have antivirus. All these comes under your system utilities. Coming to your system libraries, as any of the programming languages or the operating systems, you have some predefined functions. So if the user wants to use this predefined or the built-in functions, we make use of libraries. And the next level of in the architecture of your operating system is nothing but your hardware. So where you want the devices to be worked for the user. So starting from your application layer, each of them will in turn help each other in order to make this hardware device to work. Moving on to the next one, we'll see what are the basic features of a Linux. The first important and foremost feature is nothing but portable. When you are building up an operating system, you doesn't want that operating system to be working on a single system configurations, right? You want it to be used in any type of hardware devices or any system configuration. So this is a basic feature which can be even called as portability. Portability in the sense you can use this operating system pertaining to any kind of hardware connected to the connected to the system or any type of configurations. And the next feature here is nothing but hierarchical file system. You have n number of files stored in your system. So that particular files are being organized in a tree like structure which we call it as hierarchical file system. And the third feature of your Linux is open source. It means that any of the user, if he wants any extra feature to be, uh, to be added up to the operating system, the user can add the extra feature to that particular operating system. So your operating system is open to all the users so that you can change the source code and make it functional again. 
Coming to the next feature of it is multi programming. More than one program can be executed at the same time. As you all know, when you are building up and you are operating system, you want the security to be provided to it, right? So it can be provided, security can be provided to the files present in the system, or the security can be provided to the users who are using the system by means of authentication. And the next feature of your Linux is nothing but multi users where there more than one user can be operating on your operating system. And shell here is the additional feature which is being included in the Linux. So using the shell, you can perform, user can perform the operations and make the hardware devices to work. I'm repeating it once again. Shell here is nothing but act as a converter. Whatever command is given by the user will be converted to the form which the kernel can understand. And this kernel will in turn make your hardware devices to work. Having seen the architecture of the Linux and the features of the Linux, we now see what are the commands that are being used in your Linux operating system. The first command we'll be dealing here is nothing but your echo. So when you go for your echo here, echo command is used for printing a text onto your monitor. So when you want a string to be displayed onto your monitor, I'll be just using echo followed by the option and the string. And here the option is nothing but an optional one, whether you want to include it or you cannot go for including it. When I want this options to be enabled, I need to write it as hyphen small e. And if I want to disable the options, then I need to go for hyphen e. And when I'm using this uh, small e or capital E, I'm either making this backslash characters to be enabled or backslash characters to be disabled. Now, when we move on to this syntax of it, when you go for input echo, I'm not giving any option directly. I'm providing a string here. So your output will be Linux commands will be printed onto the monitor. Now, when you go for your input echo hyphen E Linux slash N slash N is a backslash character. It means that you want these two words to be printed on a separate line. So this slash N will be working only when hyphen E is included in your command. Without including hyphen E, if I just write echo Linux slash N and commands, my word will not be print. These words will not be printed on two different lines. They will be printed on a single line. And if you want a horizontal top tab to be included between your commands, you can go for Linux slash T and the commands. If you want to disable this black slash characters, you can just write it as hyphen capital E. Moving on to the next command here, which is nothing but your path. So when you go for your path, I mean, we generally don't call it as a command. It is nothing but a variable. As you all know, variable in a programming language is nothing but it is used to store some values, right? So here path is also known as an environment variable. And this particular variable will store the path as it implies the path of all the folders which are present in the system. So when you want to see what is present in your path, I can just go for writing the command as echo dollar path. So you will be getting the output displayed where each of the folder path will be separated with a colon. And why you require this path? So whenever you execute a command, the search operation for that particular execution will start from the first folder. Then it moves on to the next folder until it is able to find the given command. This is for just viewing the path. For example, if you want to add your own directory to the existing path, you can go for using a command known as export. Export path is equal to the directory path which you want to add dollar path. So when I'm using this export command and specifying the path followed by dollar path, the path specified will be added to the existing directory path. So it will be start added at the starting of your existing path. Now, if I want to add the same path at the end of the existing path, then you need to go for writing it as dollar path colon the directory path. So this is the existing directories and your path. The new one is added at the end. 
and you can even go for adding multiple directories here so when you want to add multiple directories here you will be adding it as export path is equal to dollar path followed by two directories one is the is your one folder file is another folder path is another one colon and you are even specifying the second directory path so these two paths will be added at the end of your original path we have another command here which is nothing but man man in your operating system stands for your manual page so it is same as your help command if you want to know what a particular command does you can go for using this manual page and the syntax of this man command is man option section number and the command name option as i told you in your earlier one this may not this may be or may not be included this is your section number followed by your command name for example i just want to know what does ls do without any option and the section number i'm just using my man command as man followed by the keyword ls so it just displays me what all ls does generally ls is for listing the files which are present in a directory if i just want to include the options also along with the command we have different kinds of options here one is hyphen k followed by the command so when i mention it as hyphen k and the command name it displays all the pages wherever you have a match for this particular keyword all the manual pages will be displayed and if i go for hyphen k and the command name it just gives me the short description of that particular command if you want to make use of if you don't want to make use of any k uh, capital letters or lower case matching then you can just ignore your case so you can just write it as man hyphen i followed by the command so irrespective of whether you write it in a capital letter or a lower case letters it just displays the information related to the command if you want the exact match if you are writing it in lower case you want only the lower case command to be displayed then you can go for hyphen l and the command name irrespective of all these things you want the total information pertaining to the command to be displayed then you can just write hyphen a which provides you all the information now we have seen how to use a man command without any options and the section just write the man followed by the command but if i want to use the sections also we have total of nine sections for your nine uh, man command i can just mention the number of the section so if i just write one it means general commands related to that particular command or the keyword whatever we specify section 2 implies system call section 3 about your library functions system uh, sorry section 4 implies about your special files 5 for your file formats 6 for your game 7 for your miscellaneous and 8 for your system administrative commands and 9 for your kernel routing let us see an example now i'm just specifying man the section number and the command for example i write man 2 this is for your password setting so this for this particular command it just displays the section number 2 what is section number 2 here the system call so what are all the systems call pertaining to the password will be displayed to the warning displayed to the user now we move on to the next command which is nothing but your script now script in your linux command is generally used as your log file you want to know what you want to keep track of the activities done by the user then i can go for using script command so if i just write a script all the activities done by the user will be stored in a file since i have not given any name the default name will be type script if i want to specify the log file name i can just write it as script my session dot log so all the activities pertaining to that particular time will be stored in this log file we can after you write script and the log file you can even execute any of your commands if you want and if you want to stop tracking the activities you can just press it as exit and if you want to just know what is present in this particular session log you we can go for using cat followed by my session log it displays the contents of it next command will be using in linux is nothing but your printf same as your printf command 
of your C language, it does the same thing. If you want a string to be displayed, percentile S. If you want an integer value to be displayed, percentile D. If you want a character to be displayed, percentile C. This operation will be same in your Linux also. The next command in your Linux is nothing but password. Now you want to set a new password. So when you want to set a new password, you have to just type password. It will first ask you to enter the current password and next it will ask you what is the new password you want it. Now the next command here is nothing but uname. Now when you go for your uname, it gives you the information about the kernel name, the version of the system which you are using. So if you want to know the details, so these are all the details which you can know in under uname. If you want all the informations, I want the name of the kernel, node name, what is the release of the kernel I'm using, what is the kernel version, what is the machine I'm using. Machine here is nothing but it gives you whether it is 64 bit or 32 bit, what type of processor I'm using, what is the hardware platform and what operating system I'm using. All these details can be given by uname. So you have to just type uname followed by hyphen A. If you want a specific thing to be created, you can go for using various options pertaining to this. Next command we have here is who. As it implies who, you want to know who is the current user who is using the system. So since it is a multi-user operating system, it can even provide you the list of users who are using the system at that particular time. The terminals they have logged in. What is the login time? And sometimes it even displays you the IP address of the system which they are using. And if you want to just know the details of it, you can simply type who. If you want to even go for including the options, you can just go for hyphen A to show all the information, hyphen M only the username. And if you want to know the count of the users, it is hyphen Q. If you want to include the headings for each of the displayed information, you can go for hyphen H. And if you want to know the details of all the users, their current login time, the terminal line, what is the login time of it, login name and time, ideal time and how much amount of time the user is not using that particular system. All the details can be viewed in this by means of who command. Next command we have here is date. Now I want to just know the date of the I mean, date in your know, operating system. So you can just type the command date. So it will specify you the day, the month, followed by the date and the time. And if you want to set or change the date of it, you can just go for using a command date hyphen hyphen set and you can specify the date along with the time. Just see the format here. I'm specifying the year first followed by the month and the day. So I want to set the day as May 13. So 13, 05 is by month and 2010 is for the day, year, sorry. And this is the time, 5.30, you are specifying it. So you can even set the time. Other than viewing the date, you can even set the time. You can even set the time in the specified format also. You have your options. So plus date, plus and you can specify the format. When I'm specifying plus, you can write the year, hyphen, the month, the day, and even if you want to specify hour, minutes, and seconds, that also can be specified. The other options we have in date is, you can even give a string here. For example, date hyphen D, I can just write next Monday. So from this Monday to next Monday, just displace your date. You can even write it as last Monday. So all these dates can also be displayed. So these are all the Unix commands which we have seen and we have will be seeing some more Unix commands in the next class. Thank you all.